Hello everyone, Angelina, Sparkling Deva, and this reading is going to be on uh, the full moon that we're going to have on the 8th of November, but there's also going to be a full lunar eclipse, and this is going to have quite the impact on us. You likely can already feel it, and the effects of an eclipse, especially if it's a total eclipse, will really linger for months. So it's not just like a day or two days or something. It, it will carry on and filter through in life for weeks, months on end. So there's a lot going on right now. We also have the North Node uh, quite close to the Moon. And that also has an effect with... Uh, the North Node is, is, is about your life purpose and um, yeah that may come through a bit in the reading here and there as well that's why i, I am mentioning it <laughs> um oddly enough for this reading i'm going to start um, with the numbers three so pay attention when you go to the timestamps that you pick the right one normally i always start numbers one is the, this numbers one Right, and this time I'm going to start with the numbers three. The order that you see here is, as always, just normal. This is one, two, and three. And the card says one card from each set, one and two and three. The uh, For some reason, probably because the eclipse that's coming, I don't know. I uh, It's all blue stones. This is azurite. And this is a uh, lapis lazuli from Afghanistan. Absolutely gorgeous piece. And this is a, a Vivianite, the real deal from Australia. And um, so either one of these crystals or use the cards to choose. And it just feel and intuit, especially right now that should be easier with the full moon energies already present to tune into your intuition and i will see you at um, the reading of your choice numbers three this the people who chose the vivianite um this full moon and lunar eclipse will strengthen your intuition and uh, because that's what willow is all about you can use that consciously to go inwards for answers, guidance, healing, clarity, etc. But it is also possible that if you're not so aware of it, that you are taken by surprise at how intuitive and sensitive you suddenly are. So make sure that you are properly grounded so that you are not thrown out of whack. Because if you pick up a lot from people or from the environment, uh, and um, if that happens, it may be good to withdraw for a bit and then use that time for your own inner growth and also recuperation because that comes up. Um, yeah, I have to remove the crystal. Um, that comes up with the second card, Shambhala initiations, uh, to retreat, go within, and um, recuperate, rest, and so on and so forth. And this moment of retreat is especially important if you have been racing through life, right? Like always hurrying and stressing and doing and busy and active. Let's see if I can put it back. The other card had too much glare. And um, then if that's true for you, that you've been uh, just going and doing and acting and pushing and... and um, then you may find right now that your body is not a very willing participant when you want to do that and want to keep doing that. So listen to your body as well and give it what it needs. Whether it's rest or sleep, meditation, also food and drink, water. And at the same time, your spirit may also need this break. So if you feel that, then just do that. And it comes up with both cards. And during this time of the full moon and the eclipse already now, because the energies are already building up, they have been for days, 
uh, you can get many insights and pointers in your dreams. And that also comes up with two cards, the dream thing. So if that is the case, it could be helpful to briefly write them down. I usually just go for short phrases and keywords and then do research later on online to find out what it means and then heed that message as well. And the same goes for the many synchronicities that may occur for you around this time. Be aware of them, heed them, don't rush through life right now because that's not going to help you. And Willow is also about femininity. And uh, so meaning fertility, creativity, intuition, cycles, all cycles, right? Cycles of life, cycles of your body, uh, even your menstrual cycle, any cycle you can think of. Uh, also water, emotions, community, sharing, all these things that are feminine principles. And how that manifests, that fe uh, feminine energy, um, it varies for everyone depending where you are on your path and in your life. And since it's not a personal reading, I cannot really pinpoint that, right? Because there's a lot of variety in it. Um, but it is possible that you find that you are more moody than usual. And um, also don't be surprised if old feelings or emotions and hurts from the past suddenly surface. And if that happens to you, it doesn't have to happen for everyone, but it is possible, then if that happens, then allow them to surface to be there. Acknowledge them, right? And um, cry if you feel like crying, because crying releases the pain and the emotional... Um, uh, yeah, the emotions surrounding past events is really very relieving and liberating. Liberating is a better word to cry. And um, as soon as you have been able to release the emotional layer of something from the past, then it no longer has any power over you. It then becomes from a painful memory, a painful event that still triggers you possibly, it then becomes a distant memory, right? And without the pain or the emotions, there's even therapy based on that. I can't, with the eye movement, I can't remember what it is called now. Anyhow, don't shy away from having a good cry. It can bring a lot of re release and relief. And a good thing to do right now for you, whether you are moody and emotional or not, because that will not be for everyone, uh, but a good thing to do regardless is to be creative and especially dancing and moving. But it can also be singing and painting and anything else that's creative. But moving and dancing is a surefire way to shift the energy in your body. And... Um, and then it's important, <laughs> otherwise it doesn't work so well. Uh, this this is feminine energy, right? Using that and tuning into it. If you uh, dance according to a certain pattern uh, with steps, like you have with line dancing or a foxtrot, for instance, then it's not going to work so well. You will just have to... The best thing to do is, if you want an energy shift and tune into your feminine energy, which is located in your lower abdomen is to just move to the rhythm, allow your body to just do its own thing. Allow it to just move. No predefined steps or patterns or anything. You just move your hips or whatever, just, just do, just dance. Let your body take over in that sense. Your feelings take over then, right? And Shambhala, the card, we already cover that part, partly uh, with the message about the retreating, going within, uh, the rushing, and um, just like Willow, it also speaks of heightened intuition and connection with enlightened beings, and especially in that sense of that card, the Ascended Masters. Now I'm going to your other card. Right, this... Uh, last card for your reading, Ancestral Realm. 
the message of that card speaks of possible issues with a family member or breaking free from beliefs and ways of being from your family. Now, this may indeed be an issue for you right now, but I feel a far deeper message come up for this reading. Um, your ancestors are very present, present around you during this time and they are cheering you on. I feel a far more... Yeah, just look at the light when you, you look through this, this, this archway. The light here, it's so beautiful also there it's so bright so sunny so positive so that that's the energy i feel from your ancestors this incredibly powerful but very positive sunny energy and they really are cheering you on and i do feel there may be a connection between that message from the card um about how uh, what or how your family tends to do things, maybe having an issue with family or family member, and with the ancestral thing. Um, but even if you decide that um, the, the way of your family is not for you, that you rather have another way of living and thinking and seeing things, even then, your ancestors will applaud and cheer you on for doing that, from taking another route. And this is so important. Again, I get goosebumps all over. And that, that always means that I'm onto something that is really very important. It, um, yeah, yeah it, it feels so strong. That if I actually get a yes, 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 that's the right way, that they're saying that, all of them together. And yeah, the, the goosebumps are getting worse now. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. It's such a powerful message. And it is very possible that you choosing to, 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 to live the way that feels good to you set something straight in your family line. It, it is that deep. Some Something that was off, just a tiny little bit. And uh, as if the, the hand or on the, on the compass had deviated from its true north in your family. And when you start following your own way of living now, and your own way of thinking and doing and believing and... Um, you set that dial straight and then not just for yourself but for your entire family or ancestral line again goosebumps on my legs arms every just top to bottom and um, this is why they are cheering you on and are very happy and currently strongly supporting you and your efforts in your life and your entire life as well their presence is very prominent right now around you. Whether you notice that or not, they are there incredibly strongly, you know. And yeah, and, and this is all I have for you for this reading because I now feel the... I was very, very connected to your ancestors however odd that may seem, because it's not even a personal reading, but still, I was really connecting, they came through, I was channeling, and now they're moving away, and they sever the connection, because they've said what they wanted to say to you, and what they needed you to know. So, um, yeah, it, it, this is one of the most powerful channelings and messages I've had ever during a reading. And I, as such, also hope it resonates with you. And thank you for watching. And um, I'll be back again soon. Have a wonderful full moon time and uh, lunar eclipse. Bye. All right, numbers two. Uh, so the people who chose the Labi Lazuli, make sure you have the right timestamp, although numbers two will always be in the middle, of course, <laughs> nevertheless. Anyhow, your first card, it's upside down, it's the uh, Hazel card, Inspiration Wisdom, and it came upside down, um, 
So, can, because this deck uh, with the trees also has reverse messages, well, we're going to use that. <clears throat> then it says that right now is not a time to act. And you likely won't feel very inspired either. And uh, probably you feel more stagnant or you simply notice that things are blocked and stagnating in life right now. Uh, during around this time of the full moon and the eclipse. Um, and it is important to listen to your intuition, especially now. Don't fight this phase either, because you can't simply will or force your way through or out. It's not possible. And please don't feel it's a bad thing either, this, that you're going through, because it isn't. It is really quite beautiful, as on the other side of this block is a potential for new, for doing things in a new way, because you have then transformed. And that's what it's all about. So this stagnation now is part of a process that you're going through. So don't fight it, don't get uh, upset about it. It's really very beautiful. And uh, your next card, I'm going to stick that in now as well. The Akashic Stargate. Absolutely beautiful card. And um, this says that you have come to um, a place where you have to make the decision where you want to go. And that's the whole point of this process. Um, you have come at a crossroads, which is that stagnation, the block. And uh, which is then also why you are stuck for now, right? And um, you may be co subconsciously waiting, hoping uh, for someone or something to clear that block to sh or to show you the way to smooth your path. But that's just the thing. That is not going to work. Maybe that worked in the past, but this time with this process, the, the point is that you are going to choose and decide because you are the one that has to walk a path, your own path, right? And um, you have to walk the path of your own choosing and not the path that someone else or circumstances set out for you. Sometimes that's easier, but right now it's not going to work. It's not the idea. And um, there is very likely overwhelm at having to do this yourself, having to make a decision and um, possibly also fear of going, maybe of going, fear of going in the wrong direction, making the wrong choice or, or it can also be fear of taking responsibility for yourself and Maybe also fear of becoming independent, which is basically responsibility, taking responsibility for your own, over your own life and for your own life and your path. Um, the message is to tune into your heart, to feel, and then to move in a direction. And you will always end up in the right place. Even if there is a little detour, that, that's okay. Sometimes you learn uh, things during a detour that you also need to learn. So don't worry about that. The importance of this point is your journey. In uh, uh, This point of your journey is not to choose the best or the fastest route. What it is about is that you decide. You choose. That's the point. And whether that's a long route or a short route or the best route, that's not the importance of this. It's about you choosing and then doing. And once you've overcome your overwhelm or possible fears, your inspiration and creativity will flow again. Then this card will go back upright, right? And um, your inspiration will come back, your creativity will return. And um, as soon as the blockage is gone and the blockage is you having to decide and for yourself. And um, 
Yeah, another obstacle overcome and, and you will have done that all yourself. So this is all about growth, making your own decisions in life, following your own compass and your own inner guidance. And um, with that comes a sense of liberation that you may not be able to comprehend right now. Especially not if you're, if you're not used to doing this, not used to taking your own, uh, making your own choices and decisions and taking responsibility and so on and so forth. If, you're, if you find that a bit, ee, a bit scary, then you likely can't really um, see that it's very liberating to actually do that. Um, simply put, you unleash yourself when, when you stop blindly following what the external dictates to you. And, um, and, and if that happens, that's not necessarily because other people are bossy or something, um, but it's more that you didn't take control over your own life before. Right, likely out of fear to stand tall or maybe afraid to ruffle a few feathers here and there. That's, um, yeah. But if you do that, it really is so liberating. It's like, yes, there's this feeling of I've done it. I've done it myself. I can do it. And um, your last card, um, I'm going to read that from the booklet because it's a really beautiful message. This is what is... Coming then, the star gathering card, and that says that you will have found what when you're through this, right? When you've overcome that block, etc., you will have found the lost pieces of yourself and your energy, and now it's your time to shine. You are magnetic, attract, attracting people, energies, and opportunities that will allow your dream to unfold. This is a time of wishes fulfilled. All of your dedication, focus and dreaming has paid off. And now you can reap the rewards. It is important that for you to know that this plane of existence is your rightful place. And not to spend too much time trying to uh, transcend this reality. For you chose to be here at this time. Make the most of this powerful opportunity. If you are feeling particularly connected to certain individuals at this time, it's because you are finding your star family. Wow. Beings you connected with before you entered the cycle of physical incarnation. And as long as you are connected to yourself, you are home. And that's also important because if you, if you give your power away by letting external things or people uh, define your path, you are not really connected to yourself because you could then very well be walking a path that doesn't suit you whatsoever. That's more the other person's path. So then you're not connected to yourself and then you're also not truly home. That's why it can be so liberating to do this. So this is what I have for you again don't feel bad about this, right? Because, like I said, it's a process and it's a beautiful process. A process of growth and liberation, finding yourself again. Hope it resonates. Wishing you a wonderful full, full moon and full lunar eclipse time. And I hope to see you with my next reading. Bye! Numbers one, the people who chose the azurite crystal, be sure that you chose number one, right? Because like I said at the beginning, I'm, I was starting with the number three. So if you were number three and then you chose the wrong, <laughs> the wrong timestamp. Uh, numbers one, what will the full moon and uh, the total lunar eclipse bring you? We have the Aspen or Poplar card. And this is mostly about courage and determination. And you will, around this time, and for, I feel, quite a long time after the full moon and the eclipse, have the courage and the de determination 
to deal with anything or anyone that is difficult. Um, for yeah, I, I really don't think it's a temporary thing. It feels more that you begin to empower that quality to be able to do that. No longer getting off kilter when something upsetting happens, but able to stand tall and strong amidst any chaotic situation. Like the poplar leaves can make an awful lot of noise in the wind, but the tree itself is firmly rooted and strong. It can handle a shake-up and it, it's like you're now becoming like that as well. Depending on what is at play for you, this can be even stronger. More like finally being able to stand your ground and say or exude the energy of no more. Right? That's even stronger than, right? And um, even though Aspen indicates that there is a challenging situation already around you or coming up, that you will be able to weather it. You will have the strength and the courage. And remember that having courage, being courageous, does not mean that you do not have fear. It means that you can overcome your fear, deal with that fear, and so that you can do what needs to be done and, and deal with it, right? And it, it, the fear will not debilitate you. And... You, as you can clearly see in the card, you are connected to your warrior spirit. But again, that doesn't mean that you should engage problems with blunt force. Because that's actually not all that powerful. That's more from a knee-jerk reaction, more the ego. Uh, you, you can also be a very powerful, a more powerful warrior from the heart. And um, the reason that's more powerful because is that you are then more solidly dealing with things from inner strength as opposed to uh, knee-jerking or from the ego, right? And uh, when you approach things that way from inner strength and from the heart, you yourself won't get nearly up as upset or angry or stressed out and off kilter when something happens than when you jump in uh, like the, a bull in a china shop. Because then you will get upset and your uh, cortisol levels will rise, etc. Right? And, um, and, and to do it this way, this different way from karma way, but nevertheless incredibly strong is now within your capabilities it's a brand new way of standing up for yourself and setting your boundaries dealing with difficult situations or difficult people and that's a really precious gift and then we i'm going to stick your next card in heart i'll move it over heart of source look at the light coming from that card isn't that beautiful oh how did i do that hang about that was not the idea. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, heart of source. You feel more and more connected to all that is to source. Not that source was ever not present. It always was and it always is. It's always there. But sometimes you may have felt the connection uh, wasn't there. Right? And, and maybe then felt lost a little bit as if you were fumbling in the dark. But it was always there. And this card also says that um, it, it invites you actually to go within, in your own heart. And um, with what came up with the Aspen card, I feel that that will happen quite by itself. Because of these energies, with the full moon and the, the eclipse, they will help with that. It, it, it goes by itself because you're ready for it. And, and that means that um, then acting from love, from inner strength, um, and, and from the heart, with the courage that Aspen spoke of. And remember, acting from love can indeed also be saying no.
or saying, I don't like this or no more. That's also from love because it includes love of self. And love of self means that you can stand up for yourself, speak up. But you do it in a more loving way, more calm way. And, um, yeah, it, it, actually the Aspen message, so that first card, um, feels as if you finally open your heart um, um, or further, maybe it was already open a bit, but it's now opening more fully or fully, and that you shift into its vibration. It feels like a very warm, steadfast, powerful embrace, even when you say no more. And that is what the full moon and the uh, total lunar eclipse will bring you. It's absolutely wonderful. Just, I, I can't help but say that. Just look at the light of, of that card. And breathe that into your heart, as if you have a lung in your heart. You take it in, breathe it in, allow it to come in. It's so powerful. And then, at the same time, I'm going to stick your last card in, which is the Sword of Light. Um, yeah, the Sword of Light. And um, the Sword of Light can help you to do all that came up in the reading. Like maybe cutting away cords or anything, anyone that doesn't serve you any longer. Um, it may, it, it, it can also be that you feel like you have to call on Mar uh, Archangel Michael to help you with this. Or to give you the extra strength to solidly stand in your power and to claim your space and your power. So if you feel you need that extra, you know, the extra bit of oomph, then call on Archangel Michael. He will help you. It's uh, Archangel Michael is so incredibly powerful. It's uh, sheer masculine energy, vast force of masculine energy. It's just, yeah. Um... It, it's as if you've given away your power for a long, long time and you are now finally ready and in the right place in your life to reclaim it. And again, do that from the heart. Not from anger or upsetness or anything, but from the heart, which is where true power resides. It's in the heart from love. So this is what the uh, uh, full moon and the lunar eclipse will bring you. I hope you can feel it because it's very strong and it's an absolute beautiful shift within you, a beautiful gift. So thank you for watching and um, I'll be back again soon with another reading. Have a wonderful weekend and a very good full moon and eclipse time. Bye.